All right. So we've got a couple repeat champions. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Yeah, so the Buffalo Bandits win their sixth NLL championship. They defeat the Albany Firewolves in two games, 12 to 8 in game one, 15 to 13 in game two. They repeat as NLL champions. I mean, when you have guys like the Great Dane, Smith, or Josh Byrne, or Chris Cloutier, or, you know, Steve Priolo, I mean, it's just a stacked Buffalo Bandits roster that overcame. The early season struggles, you know, they were at what five and four and five at one point, overcame the struggles of the early season, beat Toronto, it, it very impressively beat Albany, who put up a good fight, you know. They, they definitely put up a good fight, I will say that, you know, if. <laughs> With the, with the team that Albany assembled this year, a very young team that can definitely come back and do this again next year. I think there's a lot of promise there for the Firewolves. But for now, the Bandits and Bandit Land reign supreme in the NLL. Now, again, there's still some uncertainties in the offseason. I believe the ESPN TSN deal is expiring, so I don't know what in the world's going to happen there. Um, Again, players are, you know, going up north or playing in the PLL. So, and speaking of going up north, summer box has started. So all of the senior A, junior A leagues, you know, the race for the man and the mento, they have started. Uh, definitely check out the um, the OJLL YouTube page. Um, there's another page that does all the um, the BC Junior A games. I forgot the name of the page, but all those games are going to be on YouTube, so make sure you get to YouTube. I'm not sure what the Rocky Mountain League is going to do. Um, I have not looked that up very well. Of course, you know, a lot of people are expecting Six Nations to lift up that Man Cup in September um, with the roster they've signed. Again, just absolutely stacked. A lot of NLL guys, you know, just absolutely stacked roster. Of course, you know, two teams in the NSL have returned. So there's that as well. So keep an eye out on things going on throughout the summer for summer box lacrosse. Now, in the NCAA, uh, again, you know, D1 men's box, mostly we're talking about that here. Of course, you know, the other champions as well were crowned. Um, the big storyline coming into this national championship game where these two teams, Notre Dame, led by the Kavanaugh's and Liam Entzman, you know, absolutely dominant in the cage. Maryland, on the other hand, a lot of people said, including myself, they weren't supposed to be in this position. In fact, I thought Maryland was going to get beaten the first round by Princeton, you know, but ultimately that did not happen. But ultimately, Maryland beat Princeton, beat Duke, and beat Virginia on their way to the national championship. But yet it was just too much, too much, you know, Weirman could not get anything on the faceoff die. Uh, Zapatello did his best, but ultimately, again, Notre Dame scored 15 points. Maryland only scored five. And, and then Logan McManey, you know, you know, he didn't do his best in the cage. Like, he had, like, zero saves for a good chunk of this game. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that Notre Dame, you know, was – going to take this championship, whether people liked it or not. It was just too it, it was just too easy to predict Notre Dame not going and winning the national championship, going back to back, you know. So the fact that Notre Dame did go back to back, they avenged their loss to Georgetown. You know, they beat Denver, you know, and everything like that. And, I mean, they, they did what they needed to do, you know. They did exactly what they needed to do, which was – dominate in every facet and win this game pretty easily. 
So now, with Notre Dame, you know, winning the national championship, a lot of guys are now going to the PLL, you know, that have been drafted, like Brett O'Neill, Connor Shellenberg, the Kavanaugh's, you know, Antiman, Zapatello. I mean, so a lot of this, you know, COVID, you know, era guys, the guys that have been around since COVID happened, you know, they're gone. They are definitely going, you know, and going to play the PLL or play, you know, somewhere else or, you know, get out of lacrosse entirely. So it's going to be intriguing to see how everything shapes up for the PLL this year. Again, that starts on Saturday, noon Eastern, ABC, one to two games a week on the ESPN family of networks, you know, so that's going to be very, very intriguing. You're going to be watching PLL from a neutral perspective until they bring a team to Dallas. Until they bring a team to Dallas, I'm going to keep a neutral perspective on things. I already keep a neutral perspective on things when it comes to these videos anyway. But, you know, I was a fan of the Water Dogs. Now I'm not. So, <clears throat> so yeah, throughout the summer, we'll definitely be talking more, you know, about it things and everything like that so like you know i'll have like you know i'll see the standings and everything like that i'll get that up and everything just to make sure everything's up to date as best as i can throughout the summer with all this stuff because a lot of lacrosse is going to happen the race for the man Minto, the pll championship and then late in september the world box lacrosse championships which will end our coverage for the 2020 three 2024 season you know that's gonna be fun so cannot wait to talk to you guys throughout the summer um you know obviously i'm not gonna talk about the pll next week i'm gonna wait a couple weeks and, and see where things are with the pll so just wait a couple weeks and i'll come back to you talking about the pll and everything like that and more you know of the summer box stuff and if any, you know, crazy news happens, you know, like Brown, you know, um, getting a new head coach, you know, we'll definitely talk about that. So from me to you, hope you had a good Memorial Day. I know it's almost over. But I hope y'all had a good Memorial Day. Hope y'all relaxed. You know, this game was a weather delay between Notre Dame and Maryland. So that was also definitely a factor. So, yeah, uh, see y'all later on this week with the PWHL first video on that league. Um, cannot wait to talk about that in just a couple of days. Take care, everybody. Good night.